Good morning and welcome to the Weekly Insights with John Plassard. The number of the week, one billion. If you bought every company that lost money in 2019 that had a market cap over, over $1 billion, and so there are about 261 of those, and you bought every single one of those companies, you'd be up 65% so far this year. Almost one in five of these money losing company is up 100% or more this year. There are some huge gainers on this list, including companies like Overstocks.com, Tesla plus 430%, Peloton and Moderna to plus 290%. But there are also plenty of big losers in this money losing firm. More than one quarter of these stocks are down 10% or more this year, while almost 50 names have fallen 30% or more in 2020. Despite what you could think, it makes perfect sense that certain businesses would see extraordinary gains in 2020 despite losing money. The present value of a stock or a businesses come from its discounted future cash flow. So investors aren't worried about current cash flows, but how spending will impact cash, cash flows in the future. Investors who focus exclusively on the current results miss the forecast for these threes. The problem for many of these stocks will come if, when, so of these companies don't meet their expectation for the future. The woman of the week, Christine Lagarde. Christine Lagarde, the head of the ECB, considers herself as an owl, a bird of wisdom that can see well in the dark and have a wide range of vision. She warned, again, governments against pulling pandemic support schemes too quickly as Eurozone Eurozone economies struggle to recover from the coronavirus crisis. Christine Lagarde's greatest concern is that fiscal policies put in place during the pandemic, including furlough or short-time work schemes, be stopped suddenly. Instead, government's policies should be tailored in such a way that we can avoid the cliff effect. Policies have to be launched in parallel with the phasing out of support focused around public investment, education, and an efficient regulatory environment. As a reminder, ECB itself has taken unprecedented action to caution the blow from COVID-19 failout, ruling out a 1.35 trillion euro pandemic emergency bond buying program known as PEPP. With rising coronavirus numbers threatening the fragile recovery, many observers expect the ECB to unveil fresh stimulus before the year is over. The latest new pandemic measures in France, Spain, Netherlands or Switzerland will have a huge impact on the European economy if those measures last until Christmas. If governments doesn't react now with more stimulus, the economic contraction will be longer and, cuts and cost much more. It's now or never. Next week, Monday will focus on Chinese GDP growth rate for Q3. Tuesday, U.S. housing statistics will be under the sunlight. Wednesday, don't forget to look at the inflation in Great Britain. Thursday, European consumer confidence could have an impact on the euro. And finally, Friday, U.S. and Europe PMIs could confirm or not that the global growth could rebound at the end of the year. Have a wonderful week. 
Don't forget to read my morning and keep on winning.